Hi there. Uh, this is Cassidy. I'm sure most of you know that already. I've been getting a lot of questions concerning the things I'm going through in my transition. And I thought that today and possibly tomorrow, because I don't know for sure when I'm going to show this video, but it probably will be sometime this weekend. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the steps that I do for my shots and try to answer some questions about what is happening to me besides you know the normal craziness but today I'm all set up here to do my shot uh, today's the day Friday I had my last shot uh, a couple of weeks ago so today I'm going to show you what I use for my injection and I will actually go through putting it together and I will do an injection. Of course you're not going to see me doing the injection because it's below the level of the camera here. First thing you need to know is I do a shot every two weeks. Uh, my last shot was on the 26th of September, a Friday. And I always do my shot either on a Friday morning or a Friday afternoon, uh, depending on just what sort of mood I'm in, but I always do it on a Friday. I'm on a two week cycle, just like a cis woman would be. Today's cycle, I like to call my egg cycle. It's my egg day, because this would be the day that if I were ovulating, I would ovulate. And in two weeks time, or two weeks ago, that is my shark week. And that's, if you understand the, uh, the comical metaphor that a shark's brain looks like a woman's reproductive system, then you understand what shark week means. That would be when I would menstruate if I menstruated, which I don't, but it's the same sort of um, cycle that cis women get on and it's a cycle that I'm on. So what do I have that I use for my shots? Well, it's all laid out over here. First off, alcohol swabs. I have two of them, one for my thigh and one for the bottle that contains my estrogen or estradol. I have a bandage, which goes on my thigh after the shot. I have a gauze pad in case there is bleeding. Sometimes I get a little bleeding on the thigh. It's not a lot. I, I haven't had a gusher yet where I've heard that, you know, it comes squirting out. I don't want that. I have first my syringe, nicely packaged. And then I have two needles. There's a reason for that. I'll explain it as we go along. And last but not least, estradiol, liquid estrogen. This is the hormone. Estradiol is actually the um, technical name for it. Uh, there's also another um, chemical that is produced as well. Mm, it's kind of dark in here, but right now I've actually, over the last three months, and I have been taking injections for three months now, over the last three months, uh, I've used almost half this bottle. You can't really see it because of the lighting in here. But I've used about half the bottle. Almost. So I go see my doctor on Monday, and I'm going to tell her to go ahead and place in a new order for me to get more. And they FedEx it out to me and from Las Vegas in about two or three days. So what do I do? Well, first off, just to let you know, uh, I have to sterilize my thighs my thigh. Uh, I have four injection points on my thighs. Uh, two on my left and two on my right. And I alternate between them. Today I'm going to do an injection on my upper left thigh. Last week it was my upper right. And two weeks from now I'll do my lower right. That way you don't stress out the muscle. You're not you know, jabbing yourself in the same spot every time. I am wearing a long skirt. All I'm really going to do is roll it up so that I can get access to myself. Um, 
Normally I just wear pajama bottoms <laughs> and drop them, but I'm not going to do that for you today. That would be kind of crude, kind of rude, and I don't want to do that. I have to figure out where I'm going to do my injection. And I have a spot actually picked out right about there. And I'm going to swab that down with first alcohol swab. And you don't really have to do a lot. Now that I've done that, I put the alcohol swab just to the right of where I'm going to do my injection so that it actually gives me a point to line up on to put the needle in. Okay, so now I have my syringe, break it out. And I've got a paper towel over here that I'm putting all my trash. I'm going to use first the short needle and this is used to get the estradiol into the syringe. And all you do is just screw it on. There it is. Now my injection is going to be 0.4 milliliters right there. You can't really see that, but there it is. 0.4 milliliters. That's my injection. That's how much I take every two weeks. It's not a lot. A milliliter is really no more than a cubic centimeter of fluid. And a centimeter is about, it's about three sevenths of an inch. So it's not a very large volume. And I'm only using 0.4 of that, four tenths. Now, I have to prepare the bottle, and that's where the second alcohol swab comes into play. And I clean the top of it off so it's nice and sterile. Pop the needle. Put it right in the center. And then turn it upside down. So there you go. I'm ready to do the injection. Uh, ready to pull the fluid actually. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the air into the bottle. This kind of pressurizes it so that when I pull it out, I pull out about a full milliliter. I not only have a vacuum, but I have air forcing the liquid in. I just tap it a little bit, try to get that air out, and then I push it right back up to .4 milliliters. And there I am. That's done. Now, I recap the needle. It's a good thing I put the cap on there to jab myself in the hand and I remove it. That's a short needle. All done. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to dispose of it after this is all over. Now I bring out the long needle and put it on. And I know some of you are probably saying, Cassie, why don't you use the long needle to get the fluid out and use the short needle to do the injection? And there's a reason for that. I'm, I'm prepping the bandage as we speak, uh, getting ready to put it on. Sorry. Missed the step. Why don't you use the short needle to do the injection? The short needle is wider which means it's easier to pull the fluid in and out. The long needle is actually much narrower, and because it's much narrower, that means when you push it against your skin, it's not going to have to drill through as much skin. It's gonna be more of a pinprick instead of having an IV needle put into your arm. 
Also, there's a needle. I'm only putting about this much of the needle actually in my leg, about a third of it. Uh, the rest is used. I kind of hold it like this and stabilize the needle against my leg. Here we go. It's a little difficult. And then I reach over with my other hand and do the injection. So stabilize helps if you have a longer needle. Alrighty. So this is the point where I'm going to take the cover off the needle and I'm going to stick myself in the leg. You don't have to look. I'm not going to show it to you. You're not going to see. I will say, okay, I'm done if you want to turn away at this point. So here we go. Cover off. Get ready. And it's going in. A minute here. Here we go. And I'm done. You can look up now. And there is no blood today. I actually uh, did not get a bleeder. Oh, just a little bit of one. There's just a little pinpoint. The bandage goes on. And that's it. Mission accomplished. I have a sharps container for my used needles. The needles go in here because they are now medical biohazards. I can hold about a hundred needles in that sharps container, which means I'm pretty much good for about two years worth of injections before I have to dispose of it. Everything else with the exception of the gauze pad, which I didn't have to use, is sitting on a uh, nice neat paper towel here. So all I do is I just fold up the corners and throw it in the trash and I'm done. That's it. So I will come back with another video where I will answer questions. But for now, that's it. You saw me do my shot. Pretty painless, huh? Catch you in a bit. Bye.